It's often quite interesting when you peel an onion just what you'll find. State Delegate Dolores McQuinn grew up in Richmond, Virginia, but it wasn't until she started doing research on the journey of slaves from Africa to their arrival in Richmond that things really began to unfold. We had no clue that Richmond was actually the epicenter of the slave trade. Now Delegate McQuinn and others interested in preserving this piece of American history have developed the Richmond Slave Trail, a self-guided walking tour that chronicles the path of enslaved Africans. It begins at their arrival point, Richmond's Manchester Docks. There are 17 stops and we have markers on those 17 stops from south side of the river, south of James River, uh, where Manchester Dock begins to, uh, to the first African church. Delegate McQuinn says while all the stops along the walking trail help to bring the story to life, one of the most fascinating stops to her is the Lumpkins jail site and the story of the slave trader, Robert Lumpkin. You had uh, Robert Lumpkins, who was a slave trader. He married his slave. They had five children. And he was one of the most notorious slave traders that lived. If people wanted their slaves punished, they would send them to him. And it was just so many horror stories that happened there. Here you are, the slave trader, and you marry your slave, okay? And now, so you are looking at a woman, or married to a woman, that looked like the same folks that you have enslaved. And so I said, what hypocrisy. After Robert Lumpkins died, all the inheritance was left to Mary Lumpkins and her children. So she offered them the slave tra this uh, Lumpkins jail site to educate the free slaves. As a result, what was once referred to by the slaves as the Devil's Half Acre would take on a new identity as a learning institution and would be called God's Half Acre. But the story doesn't stop there because Virginia Union University evolved right from here, from this site. And Virginia Union University would produce numerous leaders, including the nation's first African-American governor, the Honorable L. Douglas Wilder. The belief in these dreams held by those forebears was passed from generation to generation and spawned the seeds that propagated the will and the desire to achieve. Signage and markers lead the way past auction houses, a burial ground, and a reconciliation statue, helping to tell a story that many, like Margaret Queen of Connecticut, are anxious to hear and share. We need to pass it on to our children, to our grandchildren, our generation, our our culture is so lost. We are so intermixed and we need to learn more about our own heritage. Delegate McQuinn agrees, but says the project is far from complete. We are actually working on a $12 million campaign now to raise funds, to put a pavilion here, to do some other things with this particular site as we uh, move in the direction of developing the museum, the living museum, the walking museum for, for this area. For Another View, I'm Lisa Godley. Jerusalem